everyone. Welcome back to the Travel Mug Podcast. Um, today, we're bringing on Sue Stanfield, who founded Take It Outside, an elevated lifestyle apparel company back in 2012. She then purchased the local competition and expanded from one store to six. We love a business queen. And Sue, we know you love all things outdoors, adventure, and travel. We are so excited to have you on the show. So welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Yay. So we love starting by asking people some of their favorite travel destinations. So what has been sort of at the top of your list of places that you've been? That was such a hard one to start with because <laughs> every place is so amazing and unique in its own way, as you oh, know. Yes. I was trying to think. So my first big adventure was after university. I did a work experience travel in New Zealand and Australia. So I got to live there and work there and get to know people and kind of settle in in little communities as I went. So that was probably my favorite. Also because New Zealand is the adventure capital of the world. So anywhere you can kind of see the first bungee jump and hike mountains and hikes every day. It's incredible. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. That, I'm dying to go to New Zealand. I know. Same. Like it's seriously on my list. How long did you spend there? I was in New Zealand for about eight months and then Australia for another six and then Fiji on the way home. Oh, I got to see it. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she swung cool. by Fiji on the way home. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what though? It was a completely different experience. It was one of those 50 people sleeping in one room in a hostel with a backpack type thing. Something you'd only do really when you're 20. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. My constitution couldn't handle that at at 46. I'm going to be honest. (laughs) No, I couldn't do it anymore either, but it was great to have the experience when I, when I could. For sure. Oh, for sure. Um, Anywhere else you've really loved? Wow. I've loved Iceland and Peru. We went to Peru one time. My husband's in textile and manufacturing. We went to meet with a local yarn producers. And the most incredible experience was probably at Lake Titicaca where they have reed islands where people live on. It was old and rustic and just so interesting. And the people were incredible. Excellent. Well, we're big Iceland fans. We've never been to Peru, but we're big Iceland fans in these parts. So you're speaking our language for (laughs) sure. (laughs) So that's sort of what's happened already. So do you have in the future any trips planned or something on your bucket list? So is there anything you've sort of you know, been wanting to do, to do, but just haven't done yet? Yeah, so many things. You know, as we were saying earlier, solo travel is different. And then you do couples travel. And lately we've been doing family travel, which is a whole nother kettle of fish. We are looking at taking the kids to Europe or possibly Sweden this summer. And then as a couple, hopefully we can go somewhere tropical with adventures and mountains and maybe a volcano. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. How, how, or like what age range are your kids in? They're 11 and 12 and they are, um, and they like to think that they're adventurous, but they just prefer to go to Disney. <laughs> <laughs> um, they forget the lineups like yeah, every time. Yeah. <laughs> I am 31 and I like to think I'm adventurous, but I just like to go to Disney. So like I <laughs> yes. can relate. <laughs> yes. We're going to get along just wonderfully here. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's chat about take it outside. Where did the idea come from? Like, what was your inspiration for the business? And also talk to us about what the business actually is, because I don't think we said. <laughs> yeah. So take it outside is an active lifestyle outdoor apparel store with footwear and accessories as well. We do a lot of travel here and the trail shop is the same, but it has gear and more, more apparel for people who might do Mount Kilimanjaro or other adventures. Yes, I love that. Right. And so yeah. where did the kind of the inspiration for the business come from? So I travel, actually. Mm-hmm. It's funny because I just was finding pieces that I loved for travel outside of the maritime. There weren't a lot of pretty things to wear that were also durable and had good value. They were all very kind of heavy and not comfortable and not really attractive. <laughs> they were right, really right. Yeah. So, you know, there, 
we had a store intro called Margolians and they closed after years and years. And there was an opportunity for retail intro. And I thought, why not? I love the outdoors. I love business. I love good clothing and I love people. So put them all together and take it outside Miss Bourne. Mm, excellent. And had yeah. you always wanted to be, and we'll talk more about being an entrepreneur in a second, but had that been something on your radar that you just hadn't taken the leap yet? I always thought I'd be in business. I wasn't sure what that would be. When I went to university, I thought I would open spa destinations around the world in remote places. So it was a totally different Sounds kind of business. Sounds good as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe next time. <laughs> maybe next time. I love that. So speaking of being an entrepreneur then, so how has that and owning a company that specializes in inspiring people to, to get outside changed your views on travel and really life in general? I really like that question. You know, adventure and nature and growth were my personal values going into business. And luckily I'm in a business that I can include those values into the business as well because our customers have similar values and our employees have similar values. And, you know, it really resonates with people, especially since the pandemic. I think people that were staying home or were busy or, you know, traveled abroad found solace in you know exploring around home and around where their province is or their community safely of course but you know I think it's just it's so great to hear stories when people come in and you say hey what's going on what are you up to and they tell you about their upcoming adventure or they tell you about the last thing that they had or they tell you how what they bought at your store just enhanced their experience it's really motivating to keep going and you know keep growing as a business. I think the travel world has obviously changed a lot since the pandemic. And I've noticed a lot more people getting into things like hiking since the pandemic, because it was something that we could do outside. It was something you could do with your friends and kind of socially distance from other groups. And I think that part of the pandemic is really awesome that it's kind of opened the doors to this activity that maybe some people weren't into in the past and they're kind of getting into now. I really, I really love that. And I've noticed like myself wanting to be outside more after, you know, we were stuck in our houses for so long that it is really, really great. I was just going to say, echo what Jen was saying in terms of that appreciation piece. And I'm sure that's probably what you're seeing is that reinvigorated inspiration to probably be with nature. And I think, you know, it's, it's funny because, you know, I'm, I'm sort of, I never thought I would see this in myself, but I've become like a bird lover. I'm like yeah. loving, yeah. like being outside, like, Ooh, what kind of, like yeah. we both have become like bird watchers. I swear. I think that's what happens when you age, but it's definitely at our house. <laughs> yeah, um, do. <laughs> and I think I always loved nature, but I think now the appreciation for it has I don't know. Like I swear every time we're somewhere and it's quiet and we're looking at a lake or something, I swear I get teary eyed every single time now. And I think it's just the appreciation's grown. And it sounds to me like you're seeing that as a reflection in your business as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, nature fuels your soul. It really, it's invigorating. It's relaxing, whatever you need. It's energizing, depending on the experience you're looking for. And it's really great for, mental health and solitude and really resetting no matter what you're going through and that that's I would totally agree and being able to appreciate that is really adding value to your lifestyle Mm -hmm. definitely yes so let's talk about travel gear and packing um Megan or Megan. Megan always just struggles with packing. I'm getting better. Do you have any like packing tips or tricks that you've kind of picked up along the way of your travels? It's funny because I'm a terrible packer. Terrible, terrible packer. Um, <laughs> my girls, husband makes fun of me. I think that's what it is. I just always want to be ready for anything. Mm-hmm. But I have learned a few tricks along the way. For example, my husband's always telling me to put out, lay out what we're doing, but I need what I think I need for the trip and then take half out. So no matter what you think you need, you really only probably need less than half of what what you have right. set out to pack. Also, 
I've always rolled since I lived in a backpack for a year. I kind of roll and stuff. And that's a great trick for getting more things in your bag. And now that I travel for shorter periods of time, I like to pick up things along the way and I always run out of space. So throwing in a bag or a little roll away duffel that you can take out and have an extra carry on and check your other bag on the way home is, is my favorite trick. Yes. I love that trick. And I don't think we've talked about it on the podcast before, no. but I do that. And I did that in Scotland when I was there. So instead of using my purse as my carry on, I put my purse in a larger backpack and then I could put more stuff also in that backpack. And that was my personal item. And then I also had a carry on because we were traveling carry on only. So you got to mm-hmm. do these little tricks yes. when you're traveling like that. And I I think that is an underrated one that most people maybe don't think of, especially because, yeah, you you come home with more stuff. I was just in Disney for four days and you think, okay, well, I don't need that much stuff. I'm only going for four days. But I mean, there's you, there's stuff. And I then I bought two more pairs of Disney Minnie Mouse ears and then I had to shove them in my bag on the way home. <laughs> Luckily, oh the needs of the ears it was it was yes. a need Megan I don't think you understand but luckily I when I was leaving home I made sure that my bag already stuck to the gills before I left because I knew What's I would buy like? stuff so yeah and you can always oh. wear a pair home too oh yeah I, I almost had to <laughs> 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 yeah, I am a I am a terrible, terrible packer. And I think taking out half, like that's a great tip from your husband. I think that that makes a lot of sense. And I think my whole struggle is always, and I've said this on the podcast before, like, I don't know what I want to wear next Thursday. Like, Same. and, and so therefore I need options, which I don't really need. Cause if it's all I have, I'll wear it. So like, that is where my internal, like, I love traveling and a first world problem, but packing gives me like anxiety and I don't enjoy it. So that's my least favorite part of travel for sure. Same. Also sundresses that are made out of the material that's so easy just to roll up and undo. Yes. And you can wear them and wash them and that's just so much easier. Do you have those available at your store? I sure do. (laughs) Megan, maybe I'll maybe I'll come visit you soon. Wonderful. So on that note, then any favorite travel gear you can share with us besides the obvious sundress, which I'm now going to jot down anything else. I think the most important thing that we've seen is good quality footwear. So something you can wear for long periods of time that you can wear on the airplane. You know, you often see people traveling in flip flops, but I can't imagine they're very comfortable for very long. Like on the beach, it's great. Uh, anytime yeah. you're walking, um, wool socks helps with blisters and sore feet and then you know easy travel packable jackets and bags like we talked about socks you can wear more than once and apparel that is specifically designed for travel like fig or vra or cool like lightweight easy wear cool gear Mm-hmm. Yes. I Stuff think- that's actually made to do that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I think you kind of forget how heavy clothes can be when you shove them all in the bag. So yeah. Buying things that are like lightweight, dry quickly that you can kind of, even if you're just sink washing things and wringing them out and hanging them up while you're out for the day, mm-hmm. that can be really important. Um, and yes, footwear is probably one of the most important things that you can pack for travel because if your feet hurt your whole trip yeah kind of totally (laughs) yeah absolutely yeah I think that so many people hesitate to maybe spend the money on quality footwear but it makes such a huge difference when you have the right shoe for the right activity like don't go mountain climbing in your running shoes because it's just a bad idea every and time like yeah. you said like walking around in flip-flops is great maybe for an hour if you're going from your room to the beach or the pool but if you're walking around a city in Europe your feet are gonna kill you yeah absolutely yeah it's super important to you to definitely pack the right shoes <laughs> Yeah, for sure. 
Yeah. So in terms of owning a business, what has been sort of something that's been really surprising or really challenging that you didn't maybe foresee or expect about about owning owning an apparel business? There are so many things over 10 years. You know, being an entrepreneur has changed a lot. First of all, marketing is night and day. It used to be newspaper and billboards even, and radio even 10 years ago. And now it's trying to figure out algorithms and meta <laughs> and you know, dancing on TikTok. It's not. <laughs> yeah. You will never find me dancing on TikTok for this podcast. Me either. <laughs> no. Yes. Yes. I think that would be funny though. Yeah. <laughs> it would be definitely funny. <laughs> yeah. We'll keep working on it, Megan. Maybe one day. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, for sure. <laughs> I think, you know, the other thing has changed too is the lifestyle industry. So when we first started 10 years ago, we were unique to sell activewear and leggings and jeans with blazers and really that casual chic look. But now there are so many options. And I think that um, like casual is trendy, you know, sneakers with big baggy jeans and oversized sweatshirts is 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 in for fashion right now as well so you know there's a real opportunity to expand our markets and our customers are looking for us to do that so that's changed a lot as well mm -hmm. and it's fun to kind of be a small business and be able to keep up and pivot and shift so and I have such a great team that they can kind of be oh no what are we doing today are we <laughs> are we buying a new brand are we trying a new marketing campaign yeah, which right. is fun yeah yeah, it's great to have those kind of people around you as well that are open to anything. And I have to say, you know, I think there was used to be a downtown location that's different from where you are now. And I think previously I was in there and I, I remember looking around, but I don't, I don't exactly remember my experience. But since then, of course, friend of the show, Alicia from Truro Buzz, who of course we follow and she has your clothes on all the time. And it's mm -hmm. really opened my eyes to truly what your store offers because it's an active outdoor store, but there's so much fashion combined with it that you, not only are you prepared for the things you're going to do, but you're really going to look good doing it. And so that's why, you know, I'm, I'm definitely anxious to visit again because just, you know, the combinations that you can have where you can be practical, but also look really great is definitely what I'm looking for. So I think that, you know, you've really done a great job in having ambassadors for your store, but also the marketing as well to sort of show people that yes, you can be prepared, but you can look great doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're really lucky to have some great ambassadors. Alicia's one that we cherish because when you can find people that really live your lifestyle and actually love what you're selling, it's just a match made in heaven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a hundred percent for sure. And what would you say are some like words of advice would you have for others who are wanting to like take an idea when like you had and really make it a reality, but have no idea where to start. And of course, we're not looking for a full business plan or anything, but like, what would be some great <laughs> advice to at least get them to sort of kick off that journey for that? I actually love doing business plans and I love helping people with startups. So this is kind oh, of, there you thing. go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I could talk for about a half an hour just on this or more <laughs> hours. You know, I think there are a lot of boutiques popping up all over the place now. And what's interesting is that they're all different in their own way. And I think that's important. I think that, you know, it's funny because you see on Instagram, I quit a nine to five to work 24 seven as an entrepreneur. Have you seen those? Yes. It makes me laugh every time because it's so true. Yeah. So if you're not working in your business, you're working on your business or thinking about your business. So you really have to be passionate about what you're doing. You have to know your market and know what works and you have to put your own personality and your own spin on, on what you're doing to really be successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, as an entrepreneur, who's not a bricks and mortar type of entrepreneur, but I definitely relate with the working kind of 24 seven, constantly thinking, constantly pivoting in small or large ways. And I think, like you said, it's really important to have your own personal spin on it and not just like copy what someone else is doing, but yeah, you, you exactly. need to be 
really passionate about what you're doing or you're going to end up absolutely hating (laughs) what you're doing. That's so true. And in regards to that, before we move on from this, I wanted to sort of talk a little bit. Have you found that sort of befriending other small businesses, like what's that community like and how is that a benefit for someone to coming in and opening a business to sort of have that community piece? What's that been like for you or or what does that look like? I think, um, yeah, certainly in Truro and on Quimpel Road, there's that sense of community for local business owners, even other than retail. It's really nice that they kind of, they support each other. We do promotions together. We kind of try to bring people to our districts together. And it's really nice to have a place to talk about business because entrepreneurship can be lonely. It can be feeling like you're all alone because you're marketing, your promotions, you're buying, you're creative, you're kind of every department when you're starting off. So finding people that can relate to your journey and advise along the way is is really a special gem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. So besides talking about travel, we love fun facts on the Travel Mug podcast. So What are maybe some fun facts, one or two about yourself that, that you would share with us? Don't be shy. Fun facts. facts. (laughs) Geez, the ones you can say publicly, right? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Probably those ones. Yeah. (laughs) We'll turn off the recording later. We'll talk about the other ones. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So when I was in Australia, I learned to play the didgeridoo. Do you know that? Yeah. So cool. I know what that is, but really, I don't know how to play it. Yeah. It's it's a lot of blowing with your mouth. Because it's something like clarinet or flute. It's a little bit in between. But I could play that fairly well. So that was kind of neat. I brought one home with me. Oh. And I still have it. I don't play it anymore though. No. <laughs> that was my follow-up. You got yeah. me. <laughs> I'll have to pull it up for the kids someday. And another one I think I've already mentioned in Peru. I guess that experience, it's not I don't know if it's a fun fact, but it's you're really unique. I think it's in Iceland too, you know, where the energy is kind of just kind of match up with nature and you just have that experience. That's what I'm always looking for when I travel and uh, that it really feels my soul. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I think that's amazing. And you did mention earlier about the Reed Islands and while we've been chatting, I, I didn't really know what that was. And I've just looked it up and looked at some pictures and that's incredible. What a, what a cool thing for you to have witnessed. Mm-hmm. It was really cool. It's, uh, I didn't, it was really high up. The altitude was, was pretty crazy, but we got to go to a hotel and local farmers came up in their traditional apparel. I don't know what else you'd call it, but it was so stunningly beautiful and they were bare feet and they had bags on their backs that were amazing. And it was just, it felt almost like another dimension. And then going out to the Reed Islands to see how people used to live and, you know, no electricity, no, no Wi-Fi. It was really kind of back to basics and really, really interesting. Mm, I love that. It's so funny how you said about kind of the energy because, you know, there's lots of places that I've been and I've really enjoyed, but I think Megan and I both felt it in Iceland, the like, and I don't know how else to describe it. Like you just Mm -hmm. connect with that place and it just like becomes just part of you. Like I'm like, you know, in my heart, (laughs) I like it. Yeah, same part of you and it it's funny because it's hard to describe unless you've experienced it and then you try to describe it to people who've experienced it and they're like yes yes (laughs) yeah (laughs) and then other people who haven't are like okay and you're just like no but really and they're like okay Mm -hmm. (laughs) I love that I need to get to Peru one day because it looks incredible it does it really is yeah Perfect. Well, Sue, thanks so much for coming on and chatting with us. Um, Where can people find you and your stores online? Online, we are takeitoutside.ca and trailshop.com. Awesome. And you're on Instagram and Facebook as well. Yep. Instagram is at takeitoutside.ca and Facebook, I think it's takeitoutside Inc. Perfect. Yeah. We will put all of those links in the show notes so people can just scroll down and click them and find you and start shopping. Awesome. <laughs> and also I want to mention for the local listeners too here in the Maritimes, yeah. where or Atlantic Canada, where are your stores locally? Like where what cities are they in? 
We are in Halifax in the Quimple District in Dartmouth Crossing, Truro and Moncton, New Brunswick. Excellent. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, that's it for this week's episode of the Travel Mug Podcast. As always, thank you so, so much for listening. If you want to support the show, you can leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. You can buy us a coffee. The link for that is in the show notes. And follow us on social media at Travel Mug Podcast. We appreciate you being here and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.